Hey everybody, it's uh, Neil here, again for another late update, but uh, lack of updates doesn't mean a lack of content. So I'm here to show you all that I've been working on inside the game, so I'm going to play it here and get started. Obviously first off, there's now a title screen, little selectors like that, I like the effect. Um, this one doesn't work and this one doesn't work, load universe and options, I haven't put them in yet, I literally just made this now. Um, the only one that works is Create Universe, and if I go ahead and click that, then you'll see that there's a loading screen now, uh, instead of just having it freeze on you and then do the thing. Uh, obviously there's nothing that special, but before there, was, there wasn't there was a loading bar, you now there is, which uh, saves on memory, saves on CPU, does a lot of things. Um, the game is actually going on right now, like in the background, but nothing's gonna happen so it's fine um, and let's begin uh, no, not yet. the last little bit takes a while because the planet has to check that it's not next to any other planets so it needs to select the right coordinates uh, let's go there we go all right so uh, First thing you'll notice, uh, this is a uh, different kind of planet, it's more dark, gloomy, there's a lot of rocks on this one. Wow, it is laggy. Anyways, first thing you'll notice, lots of rocks. Second thing you'll notice, uh, the screen, I changed it. Uh, I didn't like the way it was before, um, how like if you're on the side, then you're actually on the side and you can visibly see everything that down is still down. Uh, down is like sideways, sorry. Um, I didn't like that because whenever I was building something, I always tended to stay at the top of my planet because that's where everything made sense. So I wanted to change it so that it was like it was down is always down, left and right is always left and right. It always it also fixes a lot of the control problems. W is jump, as before it was space because I couldn't make one of the control things jump. Um, second thing you'll notice. Uh, actually, I don't think you'll notice anything right away. So, I did make it so that you could just play the first five minutes. So, I'm going to get every everything out of my inventory here. There's just debug stuff for testing. Um, I'll come back to that later. Um, so, the first thing that you need to do in the game is obviously get some tools. So, if you just click on this, you'll... With an open hand, you'll get lots of wood. So let's just do that. It takes a little bit. Little particles coming out. I don't think this was in the last one, but whatever. Um, I've actually done a lot. Like it doesn't. It might not seem like it because there hasn't been that many visual changes. But a lot of the mechanics that I put in are just preparing for later mechanics. Um, like. Like, I put a lot of the creature code in there. You might not be able to see it now because all you're seeing is orbs, but it works for a lot of different kinds. Um, inventory system is really good. Uh, there's a new crafting system, so if I put this up, it'll give me a recipe. Two wood equals four stick. Two, two pairs of wood equals one stick. So if I have this, then I get a stick. So, yeah, that's how that works. Uh, you don't have to have it specifically two. You can just do this, and it'll take two away from each. Um, there you go. Now I can make a sword, but I don't want to do that, because there's no hunger system yet. There is going to be a hunger system, or at least, like, something to do with the health up there. Like, there's actually a way to lose health on the original planet, because right now, the only way to lose health is... Um, actually, there's no way to lose health. On, one, on the first planet, because none of the creatures are ever going to be hostile. Alright, so now I have the option to get any of these. Uh, I'm going to start with a wooden axe, because I want a lot of wood to start off with. Uh, select the axe. You select it with the scroll wheel. Wow, that used all my wood. Alright, now it's a lot easier to get wood from trees. Still pretty slow, but at least it's better than using my open hand. Next thing I'm going to want to get is a pickaxe so that I can make uh, stone tools. Uh, they last longer and they're also a lot faster, just better all around. Let's make some sticks. You got to stand still.
to make it stick. If you move your, your mouse, then it cancels out of it. Uh, there we go. Alright. Later, these little bush things here, they, they don't really serve a point. They're kind of just a shittier tree. But later, they're going to give you like special things like berries and stuff. Um, there's also a couple different kinds of, of planet coming later. There's only three different kinds right now. There's this one, there's the original one with the long trees with the green on them, and there's an autumn planet. Uh, each of those have a certain density of trees and rocks. This one has quite a bit of rocks. Um, it's probably better to start off in this planet, just because you need a lot of, a lot of like, rock tools. So let's get a pickaxe here. Alright, let's get some rocks. There's uh, unrefined iron there, you can see a little bit in the corner. Um, you can't really refine it yet, because there's no way to smelt it. There's going to be a little uh, like sort of blacksmith area where you, that you can build to get it. It's sort, of like the old, it's sort of like the old game, but a little bit more convenient. Like you can make them at any time, you don't have to run all the way back to the beginning planet and then, um, and then create it. Uh, let's go break some of these. I need... Uh, there you go. Oh wow, that was perfect. My axe just ran out. Alright, that's... Uh, so I want to get another pickaxe, or do I want... No, I want to get another pickaxe. So, right, the, the beginning's sort of monotonous. Like, it's, it's just boring. You're sort of just getting the essentials. And that's purposeful. It's supposed to give you feel feeling of progression, so when you're later, when you're using drills and stuff, you're just blazing through everything, and you don't have a trouble, and you don't have any troubles that you had last time. Uh, you got saplings here. You can plant those. New placing system. I don't know if that was in the old game. I don't think it was. Uh, let me just use this up. If you're wondering why I didn't get an axe, it's because, like... You can just get it with your hand, but you can't get stone with your hand, and I don't want this to run out and have to start up from the beginning. Um, I'm hoping that's going to be self-explanatory. That's the only thing that I'm worried about this, is that all of this that's going on right now is not going to be obvious, which it probably isn't, but still. And uh, you can bring other species to your planet, so if you want any other kind of tree, you can bring the sapling over here and then do that. You can bring other creatures. There's not many creatures on this planet. I haven't seen very many, but... There is going to be like a lot of different kinds of creatures, a lot of different kinds of trees. Just right now there isn't because I'm focusing on more manual things. That's not to say that a lot of visual stuff hasn't been going on. Like, like the view control here. I think it looks really nice. Tell me what you think about the view control if you think that it's a little bit disorienting. I wanted to have like a mini-map up here for like where you are on the planet so you know like, if you're going up into outer space, you'll see once we go into outer space, how the view changes. Because it does change pretty much. It changes back to how it used to be so that you don't, you know exactly where you're going, what direction it is. So if you know there's a planet to the southwest, you're, you're going to know to go in that direction specifically, not something else, because the view's changed. Uh, the lines here aren't going to be here either. They're just for, sort of for debug, so I know exactly where the view starts and ends. Uh... very laggy. I don't know if that's going to come on the video. Probably will. Um, it's just why I'm getting no wood. That's the re the your hand is actually like pretty efficient. Like it's not it's not terrible, but it, it's really bad at getting wood. Like you can destroy an entire tree and get like three pieces of wood. And I, that's purposeful as well just because you don't want it to be optimal to use no tools, because tools use durability. Let's get an axe here. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can get a sword as well, or a dagger, and start killing some of these guys and getting some food, which is not a necessity yet, but it will be. Uh, so, yeah. Now you got a stone sword, now you got everything, you see the crafting system. Um, there's nothing really else to craft, just the tools right now. Later there obviously is going to be. Um, but let's, uh, let's show some of the other stuff with the items over there that I dropped in the beginning.
Bring that down. Ah, uh, it's petroleum, by the way. Uh, it's petroleum, sorry. I always call it petroleum because that's what it looks like. Um, let's pick up these items here. Items never despawn. They'll always be there. Put the jetpack on me. can fly with that. Shoot around. Uh, this is a pretty overpowered weapon that I have here. It was basically just to fend off any bad enemies if I wanted that to happen. It's pretty overpowered. Like, you don't even need to move. Uh, that's obviously going to be something, like, going to be sort of end game stuff. Um, that guy remembers that I attacked him, so he's running away. I don't know if I stressed that the last time, because there's, this guy's, these are, these guys are neutral peaceful, which means that right now, because I haven't hit this guy, he doesn't hate me, but if I hit him with my sword, then he'll start running away from me. And any time that I come, he's going to remember that, any time that I come here, he's going to try to run away from me. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for the on land stuff. Later there's going to be different houses that you can create. There's going to be a lot more stuff down here like minerals and stuff that you can mine besides these because the uh, the rocks up here aren't very efficient. They don't give you that many minerals. Like I only got one petroleum from here. Uh, so let's place our spaceship down. I have four of them. I don't know why I gave myself four. Uh, let's place that down here. I showed this at the end, the uh, taking off thing. You guys can't hear the noise. I put it in and... Yeah, there's no music. I don't know if I... Did I mention that? I don't know. There's no music because the program that I'm using doesn't record sound from the thing. I don't have fraps, which sucks. But, uh... Yeah. This takes a little bit and it's supposed to be like really climactic, like... Like it's the first time that you're leaving your planet, and it takes a long time to get a uh, to get a uh, a spaceship. So it's supposed to be something that's like a milestone um, in the game, right? So I don't want it to be that anticlimactic. Uh, there we go. That's how the view works. It sort of just straightens itself out. Uh, you'll notice there's an air thing up here. Um, I made it so that you have a limited supply of air when you're in space. So you, to regain air, you need to go back into your planet's atmosphere. And then you'll gain more air. Once you have full air, it doesn't show the thing anymore. Go back into space. You got it again. Um, the reason for that is because I uh, post-editing Neil here. Uh, I just wanted to properly explain why the limited air is there. I tried to do it in the video and it didn't work out. That's what I was about to lead into. Uh, the reason why the limited air is there is because it's supposed to make the player have a dependence on their planet and also fear the outside world so that they always need to be close to it so that they can get more air. Uh, the, the like sort of love of your planet and fear of the outside is going to be a reoccurring theme in the game uh, with lots of bad things. That's why there's the, the danger rings because the farther you get away from your planet, the more dangerous it is. So yeah, just want to explain that back to you. Uh, later you can get uh, like uh, little packets of compressed air so that you can stay in space for a longer time. It increases how much air you have. Um, yeah, you can get out of your ship now. And once you're out of your ship, the air decreases two times faster than it did before. So you gotta be careful of that. Uh, once you run out of air, it plays... Uh, it plays sort of a theme that's that's supposed to be uh, supposed to be like uh, it's supposed to be stressful. It's uh, I don't know if anybody played Sonic 2 or Sonic 1, but when you're underwater, it plays that thing that's like <laughs> like that. Um. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Like, there's not really that much complex stuff right now to space travel, and there probably won't be that much. Um, they'll be fighting, obviously, different combat with different things that you can find out here. Uh, there's going to be another mini-map, the mini-map that I was talking about before, where it shows you where you are on the planet. Once you get out of the atmosphere, then it shows you uh, the entire universe and where the other planets are. Uh, so yeah, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think I have anything else to show you. I'll tell you my, my future plans. Let's get back to the planet here. Oh yeah, that happens too. If you knock a asteroid down there, then it... Then it falls to the planet and explodes. 
I have a meteor shower thing, but it's not fully implemented, and I don't know if I'm going to put it in because it's pretty destructive. Uh, that's the only way to get out of your ship, by the way. <laughs> you just need to let it crash and then come back and uh, mine it up with a pickaxe. And then you get it back, and then you can place it down later. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've done. Uh, there's not that much news to report. I'm planning on getting a, uh, well this is news, I'm planning on getting a, uh, a sprite designer, like an art designer, because as you can plainly see, I'm not the best artist there is. Um, I mean, they're, they're not horrible, but I feel like I, it would have a lot more pull to it if people saw really nice graphics to go along with the gameplay. So me and my cousin has been, have been looking for a sprite designer for a while. If you guys know anybody who wants to work, like we're willing to pay them, uh, then tell them to give us a shout at uh, neil.emerge at irisgames.com because uh, hey, if they're willing to work, we're willing to hire them. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. My future plans are to have a mining machine, smelting machine, different kinds of uh, different kinds of creatures all the different kinds of crafting recipes. I don't think I'm going to create the difficulty layers that I talked about in the last update until the first beta is released, which I don't know when that's going to be. I'm not going to make any promises, because whenever I do, I was, I never live up to them. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, I really appreciate that you guys have stayed along with this. I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to get a trailer out. Um, Obviously, I'm not going to put the trailer out until we get a new sprite designer because I don't want to have the graphics of the trailer different from the graphics of the game, especially if they look good. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. And uh, I'll see you whenever I have enough content to show you an update. All right.